started. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. I'm Megan Rust, Interpretation Director at the Frist Art Museum. Thank you for joining us for today's Artist Perspective Lecture with Mary Sabande. We will begin with a land acknowledgement. The Frist Art Museum's building sits on land that Cherokee, Shawnee, and Yuchi Native peoples, elders, and their ancestors call their homeland. We acknowledge and pay respect to them, and we also acknowledge and offer deep gratitude to the ancestral land and water that support us. The Frist Art Museum is thrilled to present the work of Mary Sabande in our Gordon Contemporary Artist Project Gallery. Mary Sabande Blue Purple Red was organized by the Frist and is on view through January 2nd, 2022. The Frist would like to thank the following people for their assistance in planning this exhibition. Jean Butler and Shonda Vandermeer at SMAC Gallery, Johannesburg. Kavi Gupta at Kavi Gupta Gallery, Chicago. Dr. Deborah Mack, Director, and Dr. Karen E. Milborn, Senior Curator from the National Museum of African Art, Smithsonian Institution. And thank you to the first Chief Curator, Mark Scala, for organizing this exhibition. The Frist also gratefully acknowledges our supporters of Mary Sabande, Blue, Purple, Red. The exhibition is funded in part by the Gordon Cap Gallery Fund with additional support from the, the Frist Friends of Contemporary Art. And we would also like to thank the Metro Nashville Arts Commission, the Tennessee Arts Commission and the National Endowment for the Arts for their continued operating support. Before we begin, I'd like to share a few reminders. Time permitting, we'll take questions from the audience at the end of today's program. You can submit your questions anytime using the Q&A feature throughout the presentation today. And thank you in advance for your patience with us as we present this program online. In the event of a technical difficulty, we'll pause the presentation and we'll work quickly to resolve the issue. If you're having technical difficulties on your personal device, please feel free to send me a chat message and I'll do my best to help you. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Mary Sabande, who's joining us all the way from South Africa today. Um, Mary Sabande's work has been exhibited internationally, including at the South African Pavilion of the Venice Biennale in 2010, the Leon Biennale in 2013, the British Museum in 2016, and the Met Brewer Metropolitan Museum of Art in 2018. In 2017, she received the Smithsonian National Museum of Art Award, among many other honors. Please join me in welcoming Mary Sabande. Um, thank you so much for, for having me tonight. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Um, I'd like to take you through, um, through my methodologies, um, my art making, um, the way I think about color, the way I see the world around me. Um, uh, please feel free to pop some questions if something doesn't make sense or if, if, you, yeah, if you want some clarity on something. And thank you so much for joining me tonight. So I'll start sharing. Blue. Um, a few years ago, um, in 2009, I, I had a, a, a solo exhibition. Um, so when you walk into the gallery, um, you come across four figures, um, but these four figures were all in different rooms. So when you walk in, you come across this figure um, titled Sophie Elsie. So Sophie Elsie um, represents my Great great grandmother. That's another view. And when you continue in the gallery, um, in another room, you come across this figure um, representing my grandmother. And my grandmother's name is America. So the title of the work is Sophie Merrick. 
um, when you continue into another room, the third room, um, you come across this figure. Um, and the title is um, Madam C uh, in conversation with Madam CJ Walker, Sophie Velucia. So this is the first figure in the gallery where um, you as a viewer, you come across this figure that is doing something. And um, the figure is um, embroidering um, an icon, um, an image of Madam CJ Walker. So a few years ago, I was in, um, I was in New York, I think it was 2007, and it was during uh, Black History Month. And I came across, I, I learned about Madam CJ Walker, um, that she was the first black woman in the 1920s to, um, to be a millionaire. And I was, um, and then that idea drew my interest. I wanted to know more about her. And I learned that she actually made her millions through um, hair cream relaxer. And um, the reason why actually she's, um, she was included in the show or Sophie is, or why Sophie's knitting, knitting her on the wall is that um, there's a parallel um, relation between my mother's story and Madam CJ Walker's story. So my mother, um, she used to work for, for white families and Indian families in a small town where I grew up in Barberton um, every day after school. And then when she finished school, um, she got a, um, a job at a local hair salon. And from there, she moved to Joburg, where we now live. And um, she became an entrepreneur. And that afforded us, me and my brother, to actually um, further our, our education and be, um, and, um, and, and I later um, acquired a, um, a degree in fine art. Um, so this, this, these two women for me, I, um, I saw this, this relation. I always say that there's always these parallel um, histories between the USA and South Africa. And then when you continue into another room, you come across this figure. This figure is titled um, Sofin Tombigaise. So now you'll note that this figure is the only one that has an African name. And my other name is Dombigaise. Um, so at some point I, um, I, I was collecting stories from the women in my family who are all domestic workers. And um, I wanted to make work that celebrates them, that puts them you know, on, on, on a pedestal. And when, 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 I, when I was thinking of um, a dress or a, 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 a comment that, 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 I, that, that, I, that I should, that I should dress the figure that represents me, I thought, well, it should be different. And then now um, I started researching on color, on garments making, garment um, construction. And of course, I will say this, like I, at some point I wanted to, when, when I was in high school, I wanted to be a fashion designer, uh, but I, I didn't apply on time. And my second option was um, fine art. So I ended up studying fine art, um, but it, when, during my undergrad, I wanted to now combine um, fashion and fine art. And, and that's where my love of fabric started. I wanted to make these um, big dresses that are, art, but, but couture at the same time. So I used to collect a lot of magazine, Vogue magazine, all these fashion magazines. So when I was thinking of a figure that represents me, and I thought, well, this figure has to be somehow different, but yet the same. Um, as much as I can say that I, um, I was afforded education, unlike um, uh, my forebears who were all domestic workers, um, um, but at the same time, I wanted to be in the same space with these women because I am them, I come from them, I'm not different from them. But I was thinking that if I were to be in the same space, there should be something that is different from, from the rest. And I started researching on color. And, um, um, and I, I, in, 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 in Europe, if someone is wearing um, purple, uh, robes. It's either they it's 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 either they they rich or or clergy. 
And uh, I kind of like that, 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 that idea. And then, um, but for me, that was actually far away, Europe, and it's not, there's nothing that actually connects me to, or that connects all these ideas of color to Africa. And I remember one time watching the movie, The Color Purple, um, and of course the, the, the movie speaks about um, um, slavery in the South. Um, and then later I came across um, a purple march that happened in Cape Town, which I will later speak about. And these, the, these, bo these bodies of work, um, this body of work, the blue, has allowed me to look into my personal history. Um, my personal history is sitting on top of a broader history of South Africa. And, and when one um, um, speaks of, of South African history, um, apartheid takes center stage. Um, and I always say that um, apartheid was just a genius institution because um, it, it denied and deprived um, Blacks to access, access to quality housing, employment, franchise, et cetera. Um, and also um, it, was, it was a package that was a, three, that was a, a 360. Um, it, 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 in that it was also um, infiltrated in the education system. So there was an introduction of Bantu education. So let me quickly explain the term Bantu. So Bantu is a derogatory term um, for, for Blacks during apartheid. Um, so it has changed um, a number of times um, during, uh, throughout the century. First it was natives, um, and then it was plurals, and then Bantu, and then now Blacks. Um, so Bantu education was, um, was, was, was introduced during apartheid, um, and it was a system um, to inferior curriculum. So this curriculum uh, would channel Blacks into, um, into manual labor and servitude enter the maid. Um, and my work, um, I started traveling, my work started, um, um, it, it took me around the world and I was seeing places and, um, and it was just a new world for me. And I remember noticing wherever I went, there were these men on horses, um, on equestrian horses. And, um, and I remember also searching um, in South Africa um, for when looking at public monuments, they all they are all they all consist of white men on horses, and I wanted to turn history upside down, start from scratch, dismantle this thing that has been in our in our views for centuries. Because of course, you know, um, um, statues are made for to to they, they 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 are made for people to remember who their leaders are. Um, and they also know, uh, for people not to not to forget um, their leaders. So I thought of well, what happens if we just remove all these white generals, especially here in South Africa, and you put an ordinary woman, a maid, um, and this 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 maid is 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 riding his horse um, and his. Uh, black stallion is between her legs, and um, but she's not falling off, and she's in control of this. And while I was doing, uh, while I was actually looking at these um, equestrian statues, there's this ebon myth that um, if a rider, if there's two hooves on the ground, um, the rider died um, in a in a battle. If there's three hooves on the ground, the rider died of natural causes, and so on and so forth. But um, actually, nothing has been kind of concrete. It was just um, you know people just speculating and so on. And this is um, it's actually a large um, um, artwork, and um, it's it's three point one meters high. Um, and at, at some point, I wanted to dress and become Sophie because. Um, the sculptures, yes, I was using my body to cast, um, to create this, 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 this Sophie's body. Um, but I, I thought it, 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 was, it was limiting. 
and I wanted to do performances. So I started dressing up, creating these dresses that were actually big and you know fill up the whole space. Usually it would be a, in a in a in a in a room, infinity wall. Um, I'll have like a few people in the room and then just do these performances. And then um, the, um, the, the photographer will document that. And then we'll take about like a hundred pictures. And from that hundred, um, we'll only choose one. So these um, photographic prints are part of the performance um, that I do with um, a limited audience. So the idea of Sophie, she everything whatever she does everything is um, everything of, of of hers is magical. So here her eyes are closed. Sophie's eyes is always depicted um, closed. She is um, in a in a limbo. If you look at this um, this 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 post, it it tells you that she's outside. But you look at the rest and the Leah, it says that she's inside. So for me, I wanted to create this figure that is no outside, no inside. And of course, she's a myth. And of course, myths are, we use myths to tell our stories, to tell um, our histories. And Sophie, for me, speaks about that. Um, she goes and she closes her eyes. She goes into spaces where she was previously um, denied as, as, as a Black woman. She is reimagining herself in all these places where she knows that she did not belong. Um, and then her, her, her dreams became, became um, uh, bigger and bigger. This is early on in my art practice. Um, now she imagined herself as, as a queen um, and, um, and, 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 and a queen of Africa, I guess. Um, and also naming her Sophie. Um, so my great grandmother, um, she, she was born with two African names, but she died with one African name and one Christian name. Um, so when I was naming this figure, I thought of, I thought of should I actually may, uh, give her an African name or, or, or a, a Christian name? I thought, well, let me just give her a Christian name because this will always be a bookmark, a reminder of why and why, why she's named Sophie. Um, so, so I guess for my great grandmother to be given um, another name while she was working for these white families in, in town. Um, Um, I, I guess, well, she was, um, I, I guess, well, her employers couldn't be bothered to learn her name. Um, and also that naming black people, um, European names was also suppressing, um, it was aimed at suppressing cultural identity and also convert um, natives into Christianity. But it was, um, as I mentioned, like this, this was um, this institution to limit um, um, black bodies. Um, sorry about that. Um, the title of this work is um, The Wait Seems to Go On Forever. So this work came about, um, I was, um, so my grandmother, every time when she's cleaning around the house, she would have this hymn um, that she's singing loud, sometimes loud, sometimes very soft. And, um, and I thought, well, what happens if this woman um, is actually um, conducting and a, a huge opera. Um, so this dress 
um, is actually very long. I think it's about six meters long. Um, and she's conducting it and her eyes are closed and she's imagining, um, you know, conducting this opera. Um, and then I don't know if you can see there, there are notes that she's, um, that she's floating on. Um, so these notes are the this, this song that she's singing. And also I thought of, um, uh, of silent movies um, where one can see action but cannot hear sound. So here one can actually um, see the sound but not hear it. Um, faith and fashion has always played an, a role in my work. Um, so when I was thinking of uh, dressing Sophie, I was thinking like, um, what kind of dresses do, uh, what kind of dresses or what kind of fabric, what, what patterns, etc. And in South Africa, we have these um, we have these churches that are called as Zionist churches. Um, they're hybrid churches. They're a combination of Western um, Christianity and African beliefs. Um, so I buy my fabrics where these churches buy their fabrics to make the, the, their uniform. And I was, um, um, a, a, a few years ago, my studio was um, near, um, just a few meters away, there was a church there. So I always used to look at them when they go to church and they have a particular walk, um, when they were in their uniform. And of course they regard themselves as soldiers of God and only men will carry their stuff. So I thought, well, what happens if, um, if a woman is carrying it? But if you zoom closely there, the stuff is actually made out of um, Louis Vuitton um, um, patterns. So faith and fashion has always um, been uh, um, has always played a huge role in 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 my work. Um, this work is titled um, "Rubber Song Monument of Aspiration." So this is also this work is um, influenced by by um, uh, this, this church where men jump. So the process of jumping or the exercise of jumping is um, they, they, they want to get closer to, to the heavens. So they're getting closer to God and only men are allowed to do the, the jumping. And I thought, well, I want to do, I, I want to, I, will, I want to create a figure where this figure is jumping on a pedestal. So we're raising the figure driving on a pedestal but it's a woman and um so there's a there's a story here so one time when i went to um so i wanted to buy the shoes and i went to the shops where they usually buy where, where the shop where they sell um zcc uniform and i was told at the door that um no women is allowed if you're a woman you have to sit down and let the men serve you but if you're a man you can actually wander about in the shop and you know and and and, and touch whatever you you can but um so it was it was just an, actually for me it was just an eye open and then from there I was like I really have to um make um make um make this work so at some point um um I I I I I, I was looking at um I wanted to introduce my father in the work, but my absent father. So I didn't know my father until I was about 13. Um, he he um, used to work for, for the South African army. So, um, so he started working there when he was 20 up to last year. So, um, so he disappeared in the army. Um, and I, I remember when I was a teenager, I was very angry at him for disappearing on us. Uh, me and my mother, but um, when I when I start when I started studying art, I learned about the history of our country, and I I forgave him because this was actually a common practice for young men to actually leave home and go to cities to build cities, whether it's building cities or working the mines, or for instance him um, being a soldier. So this has been, it has become a part of our society where men leave home and they go work elsewhere. And from uh, while they are away, they actually sometimes forget about the family that they, um, that they, that, that they left um, behind. So I wanted to introduce this absent um, masculine um, in the work because what, how I know of him was through my mother's stories and, um, my grandmother's story. So he takes on a, a female, 
a female body. And of course, um, when I was thinking of what kind of person who he was, I, 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 I always, when I was a child, I always um, thought of him, thought of him as this giant um, toy soldier. So this idea of toy soldier um, was introduced um, in in the work. And um, um, in 2011, I was. Um, invited i was i was uh, i was um, invited by the south african um, pavilion to um, to exhibit um uh, work and um this work is titled lovers in tango so i brought the figure if you remember a few slides before there's a figure um titled sophie Velusia. Um, so that figure represented by my so i brought that figure here in that well same uniform or same blue um so the figure that, um, that represents my mother is there, and this that's the toy soldier. So these two figures um, are actually standing in 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 a in a in a, in a dance um, stance. So if you were to actually join these two figures, they'll do a a, a tangle um, stance. So but there's this space in between them. So these lovers will never meet. So it speaks about the relationship of between my mother and, the, my, my, and my father, where they only they they they, um, they only they only lived together a few years, and my father left us. So it's that idea of um, that space, and of course, because um, he's he's a soldier, so he comes as many, and hence these um, um, uh, 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 mouth mouth he, he comes as as, as a mouth. And I decided to actually remove the ammunition. Um, so these figures are actually carrying A, uh, but they're insinuating um, the gun and insinuating violence in a way. Purple. The purple shall govern. So this is um, a, a, a body of work where I was, um, I wanted to, um, I, I, I looked at um, slogans. So slogans were used to uh, group people during apartheid. So people will get together and they go march um, and, and so on and so forth. And so in 1989, uh, I think this was 1989, um, there was a march that happened um, in, in Cape Town and people were, uh, the apartheid um, police uh, laced their water cannons with purple dye. So, um, so the idea of marking has been part of um, our, our, our history, I guess. Um, and, um, and at some point I thought of letting go of um, the figure that is Sophie, the domestic worker, because I feel like she speaks about my personal history. She's dear to me, um, and um, and I thought, well, I, what happens if, um, if 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 I just put her away, um, and make something something new, something that I have not seen before. So I, was, I remember, um, I, was, I remember sitting in the studio. Like, how do I actually dismantle the body? How do I start from scratch? And and I thought of what happens if we just take the fabric and you zoom into it using a microscope. What kind of stuff will, will actually come out there? And um, I tried that process. Um, and um, so what I saw was just these organic shapes. And of course, dust was also in the fabric. These organic shapes that look like stuff that looks like seaweed, um, that looks like, yeah, like microscope, you know, when you zoom into an object. And, um, and these creatures are called non-winged uh, uh, ceiling beings. And I wanted to make a forest of them. So, um, I, um, so this is a part of a, um, an exhibition that I did um, here in Joburg, where a room was just full of these creatures. So you as a viewer, um, you navigate through this, these creatures and um, you get lost, lost in, in, in the forest. And, 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 and I thought, well, now that I've dismantled and I, uh, this figure 
and um, Sophie doesn't exist. And, and I, have to, I have to introduce a new figure. And, um, and the, the purple figure emerged. So these, um, these tentacles, they speak of, of motherhood. So she actually gave birth to them and she's leading them and they are behind her. Um, so while I was in the process of letting go of the domestic worker, the, 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 the maid, um, I thought I wanted to do a last dance, put these two figures, the new figure and the old figure together. So this work was um, inspired by Capoeira. So a few years ago, I was um, in 2012, I, was, uh, I had a show um, in Brazil. Um, so usually what I usually do when I go to a, uh, any country or city, um, I, I do um, anything that is um, a tourist. I'll take those red buses, that's me, I'm sitting there on top. Um, I think for me, it's a, it's a quicker way of learning about the history of, of that country, especially if um, you, have, you don't have, um, uh, well, you don't have a lot of days being there. So I learned about the capoeira and um, it was disguised. Um, so the, the slaves um, used to practice this every Sunday uh, when they were not working in the fields. Um, and um, so, it, it, that, so the idea was one day they'll take over the master's house. So for them to take over, they need to learn how to, how to fight. But it was disguised under, under a dance. So I thought of a work where these two were, where, um, where you as a viewer, you animate it, depending on where you stand around this plinth. Um, it looks like they're about to embrace. If you take a few steps um, around the plinth again, um, it looks like they are about to combat each other. If um, a few steps again, it, it looks like they're actually fighting. So, um, so you as a viewer, you are performing for the work, for, for the work to, for you to actually see what the work means, you need to move around. Because usually when you go to a, um, a, a, a museum or gallery, um, audience, usually audience will look at the object, um, you know, left, right, center, and then they move to, to the next one. But here I wanted to capture the audience. I wanted the audience to, 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 to move around and anim animate these two figures on the pedestal. So this is another figure. So this work is titled A Terrible Beauty. Um, so this was also a process of letting go of, of, of the domestic worker. Um, you can well, um, you can you can see that the 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 the, 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 the apron is being dropped on the floor, and then one of the creatures is pulling away the headscarf. Um, and if this was actually a movie, it would work in the way that um, so right now she's giving birth to a creature. She'll push it out and hang on the side, push another one out and hang on the side, to a point where these actually these forest of creatures will actually take over the whole space. Um, but at the same time, I wanted to limit that. I thought, well, it makes sense that um, it's, this work is only a photograph. Um, so that's a close up. I mean, you, and, and I thought of, um, so if I'm talking about this purple uh, figure that is precious, this um, purple figure that is the future, that is, um, um, that is the hero. If it was a, a Marvel comic book, she'll be she'll be she'll be considered a hero. Um, but if this hero is not hero enough, in that these creatures are always flying to put the the crown on her head, but they but they never reach the head. So I thought, well, if 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 I were to do it, I think I will be actually killing the idea. So this figure is not precious enough for me to actually call it that. Um, so the creatures now are, now that she's given birth to them, um, they are admiring her. She's, 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 she's sitting there on a, on a plinth and, and being admired by these creatures that are rejoicing. They're singing, if you, you want, you can see the sound. Um, they're dancing. Um, so there's just um, joyous um, in, 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 in the 
Um, so this work is titled Allegory of Growth. I thought of a work where, um, um, so when, one, when an artist is working in the studio, you work on this artwork and um, at some point you're like, okay, this is finished. Whether you, whether you are pushed by time or pushed by the idea um, get, uh, getting to an end or by other elements. But I thought what happens if, um, if there's an artwork, um, um, there's an artwork work where it's never finished. So the idea is every time it, this work has been exhibited um, in, 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 a, in a few galleries and museums around the world. And every time when I go and install it, um, um, I'll bring something, something extra, whether it's a tentacle or whether it's a button or um, uh, last time I changed the, the, the apron because I wasn't happy with the last one. So this work is never finished. And um, even if it were to become, even if it's uh, part of a, a, a collection, um, I think um, it will always grow until, I don't know, until the end of time. Um, so that's another angle of it. Behind. And I, I was interested in the in the in the in the in the, the rhizome. Um, my partner introduced me to um, to Deleuze and Qatari, where they speak about the rhizome. But the rhizome, um, I I looked at. Um, I I branched into botanical rhizome, um, how roots um, function on how they behave. And this work for me speaks about that. I was invited by the museum McFarl um, a few years ago, and I was there for a residency for about three months. And um, this work was um, made um, during that time. And um, so I wanted to, at some point I thought, well, I don't wanna make a dress, a typical dress, because I have been making dresses. So what happens if, I just I want something else, and I thought well, if if and, and uh, of course at that time those texts by Deleuze and Guattari influenced my thinking um, about the rhizome, and I thought well I want to manipulate fabric, so everything that you see there it's, it's fabric and wire, um, so it's the idea of roots um, clinging on the body, taking over the body, and um, um, creating this long umbilical cord that creates a spat on the on the wall, and um, they start clinging. And they, if it was a video, you see these roots actually growing on the wall. Um, so, and 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 I thought, well, where are these roots? There should be, because 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 with the with with the rise, and there's always a starting point. And then here, I thought, well. The starting point will be the belly. That's where life is at. If you're a woman, that's um, well, um, that's where um, uh, I guess babies sleep. So that's where life begins. So this womb is actually um, giving birth to these um, roots that are taking over her, her whole body. This work is um, um, titled um, "Succession of Three Ages." So I was thinking of when I was thinking of this work, when I was conceptualizing about this work, I was thinking of birth, death, and life. Um, so these four, four rocking horses that are childlike, they're not menacing at all. Um, they speak about death. So this was, this was me slowly um, moving on to another color. I was, um, at this point, I was like, now I think um, I've made enough um, purple works it was, I was getting on into the fourth year. So every four years, I, uh, the color of my work changes to something else. And also the theme changes slightly, but there's always a, a, a thread that actually connects all these bodies of works. And that is my personal history. Um, so these four rocking horses. So the, the, the thing about horses or the idea about horses, if you see one horse, um, it speaks about conquer. And, um, and parade. But if there's four horses in one space at the same time, it speaks about disruption. So that for me, is, it, it, it's, um, it's symbolic, it's metaphorical for death, where this figure slowly, this purple figure slowly going, going away. And, um, and then when it's, um, and, and I thought of, well, this work is, um, speaks of destruction, and now these tentacles, 
or um, these roots are actually taking over the body, they're engulfing the body where you can hardly ever see a body under there, but um, these purple um, um, tentacles. Um, and then, um, so every time when I'm unsure about something or uh, trying to move to a next body of work, I always introduce um, uh, the high priestess. So the high priestess is the four, a foreseer. Um, she, 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 I always consult with her when, when I have to move to the next, to the next work. So here I was, um, I was thinking of, um, what, what color should I move to? And, um, red was, um, actually the color that I was, um, that, that I was thinking of. And, um, and, and this, this, this purple, and this purple work, um, um, well, this 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 purple um, priestess is 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 um, what's the word uh, is is seeing a premonition, I guess. And so now this the, the body is 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 slowly being devoured, slowly dying. And um, a few, a, a I remember a few years ago, I, I I was reading a text by Elaine Scary on. Um, on 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 pain. Um, so death, uh, uh, death, pain, birth, and life. Um, all these elements um, they happen on the body. So they will not exist if if there is no body. So I was I was I was I was drawn um, um, to that. Like, how do you actually get rid of a body? Um, and and I thought of how do I actually show physical pain? And of course, they usually say like physical pain and mind's death. So this figure um, is, you can see with the stance, she's in pain and she's, she's, um, she's peeling, she's showing another layer. And the title of the work is um, um, Introspection. So this figure is caught um, in, in the ecstasy of her demise. So her, her so she's dying. And usually, when um, when 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 and when a body is described as dying, it means that the dying has already begun. And um, and now I wanted to introduce. Um, so why this figure was actually the purple figure was dying. Now I was moving to a new body of work. I was slowly getting into um, um, the, the the red body of work. So in Isizu, was when someone is angry. They're angry that become a red dog. So I thought of using these, um, these, 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 these dogs, these snarling red hounds. So it's also a bridge work. So now um, I'm introducing the red body of work, but slowly introducing it because after this, there's a few artworks that have the red elements, but they, but the figure is still purple. Um, so this, this, this purple figure is sending out. Um, these these red hounds. Um, I guess they're going to fix the world against um, injustice, exploitation, colonialism, apartheid. You name all these institutions that um, limit people from being people. And um, but at the same time, she this figure also believes in 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 reconstruction. In that, um, so I was a few months pregnant there. I think I was I was six months seven months pregnant and um, I was watching the news and, um, and I realized like actually news are very depressing. Um, and, and I guess this, 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 this purple figure wanted to fix the world before they, the, the, the baby comes. Um, so in a way, as much as, much as she's told, this, this work speaks about destruction, but also it speaks about life. There's a newborn coming um, with her right, um, with her right, uh, right hand, um, hand um, caressing her pregnant belly. So she actually does believe in, 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 in the future. So this work is um, titled Cry Havoc. Um, so here these red hounds are being sent out by these, um, by this purple figure. But at the same time, one a viewer is not sure is she is she is she playing, is she coming in peace because of the white cloth, or she's actually 
um, sending out these 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 um, red um, um, hounds. Um, and also at the same time, being angry is tiring. These dogs are very tired. Um, they're being sent out there to to fix the world, but actually anger is tiring. And sometimes um, this red figure is leading this pack of, of these hellhounds. And now I was getting closer to, to, um, to, to letting go or just putting aside the purple figure. I was slowly introducing um, the red figure. So the title of this work is Ascension of the Purple Figure. You can see under there, underneath her dress, um, you can see the red while the the, 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 uh, the, um, the top dress is still purple and she's climbing onto, onto the pedestal where by the time she, she reaches the pedestal, she'll become red. Um, so the red body of work, um, um, it speaks about emotions and, and how crucial emotions are in human existence. Um, as a visual artist, I wanted to play a psychologist. I wanted to understand the psyche of, of South Africans. What makes us angry? Because when you watch the news, it's just there are no good news. Um, and I wanted to um, get in deeper into the thinking of, 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 our, of our society. So um, I was using expressions um, to create, I was using idioms and, ex and in Zulu expressions um, to create visual metaphors um, in this body of work. A number of, of Zulu expressions, so Isi Zulu is a, is a language that um, commonly speaks in South Africa. There's a lot of people who speak, um, who speak Zulu, but we have 12 um, um, official um, um, uh, languages. So, so I was looking at the way people speak when they speak about anger. Um, and, um, and these idioms, um, they highlight the ferociousness of anger and the devastation it may cause. Um, so here, the, fi the figure is, um, is, 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 the dogs are actually looking at the, 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 the red figure that is carrying, that is carrying the, the, the heart. And I came across a, a, a text um, by, um, uh, what's the name? Uh, um, by John, John R. Taylor and Tandim Benzik. Yeah. Their texts um, assemble a broad range of expression um, of, which, of, of which people, of, of which Zulu people commonly use to talk about anger. What is anger? And how is anger? And what do people do when they're angry? So this red body of work is, 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 is looking at that. Um, so I was with, with this work, I this is um, a performance um, where I'm performing in front of a camera. And I thought of um, an abstract way, nothing, nothing else, there are no props, but only the body. But in a way, I wanted to, it, it's similar to a painter painting with just, you know, with just making marks. So here I wanted to make these red marks um, on, 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 you know, in, in the space, in, 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 in the studio. Um, the locus. So all these emotions that I'm talking about, they all come from, from the heart. So the heart is the, a container. So in, in English, the, the heart is seen as um, a container for, especially for joy, love, um, courage. But, but in Isuzu, um, the, 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 the ray, the, it's, it's, the heart is um, used, the, the, the terms are even broader. Um, it's in, it, 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 it includes tolerance, intolerance, um, um, uh, patience and impatience. So this, um, so this, this, this work speaks about this thing that contains the anger. And, um, and it is the heart. I've always used, um, the title of the work is in the midst of cases, also opportunity. I've always used um, uh, horses as timekeepers. Um, here, this, the red horse is riding this um, life-size um, life um, 
um, stallion and around her um, there are these life-size um, soldiers. So for me, um, it speaks about the, this practice, this, um, this rehearsal, um, this battle rehearsal. But at the same time, this battle is actually, these, these, um, these soldiers are all over the place. They're not facing one direction. They're not unified. They go, they, they're going in different space. Uh, uh, they're facing in different places at, at the same time. So um, that's another angle of it. And the figure is actually carrying a heart. I don't know if you can see that um, in the photograph. And that's um, a zoom. So the, what we're gonna zoom in. Um, so these um, life-size um, toy soldiers are, are, are around this figure protecting, protecting, protecting her. And at the same time, they also, um, um, they are, riding these stick horses. So this, it's this idea that um, serious things are said in a joke. So in a way, this battle just looks like a joke because um, these soldiers, these toy soldiers, first of all, they're toy soldiers. And secondly, they ride, they're riding these, um, uh, what do you call them, um, st stick horses. Um, so this work is titled um, "Good is Bad and 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 Bad is Good." It simply means um, appearances um, are often um, deceptive, and that things are different from what they appear to be. So a few years ago, I came across um, the story of Yasuke. So Yasuke was um, a, a, a samurai in Japan. In, um, in the 1400s. And um, for me, that was just remarkable, this African becoming, you know, like be, um, becoming a samurai, and that's the highest rank on the land. And um, so now it made me think of history. So I think history is actually distorted, um, especially when, when you look at um, African history. There's just a lot of things that just don't make sense. And um, and a black figure to, to, to actually to be a samurai is truly remarkable. I'm still in awe with this figure, um, with, this, with this idea of, 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 um, of Yasuke. So now Sophie, the character, the red figure, has um, taken, um, um, like Sophie, her, her existence is also based on, uh, on, on history to a point where, um, they kind of, things kind of look like they're myths. So I always say like, there's always, um, history is a story told by people. It's not at, at some point, sometimes it's not actually factual. And I was also interested in the idea of armors, um, protect, not, um, being, uh, protect, the body being protected. Um, so that's a, that's a, yeah, that's, so the figure is wearing a, 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 a um, the title of this work is um, Domba Dance. So with this work, I, um, I thought of the theater of um, the democracy of theater. So as Devlin um, speaks about the, um, the, 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 the democracy of, of, of theater. Um, so as Devlin is um, a stage designer, so she she speaks out. She says that um, in a, in a in a, in a theater you cannot control where the audience look. Um, you have to make sure wherever the audience is 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 looking, they're getting an experience. So this work is that whether you're looking at from um, from different angles, um, it, it 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 speaks about um, it speaks about that there's always an action, and. Um, um, let's just see if I can see this. The figure is holding the heart and she's feeding these, the, the, the dogs. So imagine if this was a video, um, the, 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 if, if it was a video, it, the figure will actually will bite the heart, feed it to a dog, and then the dog will go off stage all these dogs that, that are coming from fighting, these tired dogs, um, I, I think you can see that. 
tired dogs. So they're all coming from fighting out there. So now they're coming back to the stage to be fed the, the, the locusts. Um, so in a way, she's re-angering them. And at the same time, I was also interested in, um, in jewelry. Um, I wanted the, the figure to wear jewelry, um, but I didn't want a typical jewelry. I just, I wanted something that kind of looks like an armor, but in a way, it, but it's made, um, you know, like, but make it control. So that's my, that I always say that. So, um, so these, um, this beehive was sitting on, um, they sitting on, on her shoulders, sort of like a mantle. Um, and she, she, they, 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 she's, she's telling you that she's important because of the, that mantle on her shoulders while she's feeding these dogs. And um, if you one can notice the, on the arms, the arms is, these are, the arms are the figures that I've used before in my, in my, in my, in my works from, from 2007 up to present. Um, all the Sophies that I've worked with, they here, you can see that with the, with the colors. Um, so I've called, I've summoned all, all my ancestors to come and, and, coron and, and, and come and coronate this, this red figure. I guess that's it. Thank you so much, Mary, and thank you all for, for joining us. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or the Q&A. Well, I have a question, Mary. Um, you shared that um, each color is kind of an evolution of your, of your practice. Um, I, and I guess you're working on red now. Um, do you have an idea about what color might be next? Um, actually, I do, but I, I prefer not to share. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna keep it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep it to myself. Yeah. Um, well, but it will be about time. Um, about time. I want to. Look at the, I want to. I want to look at look into time idea of time what is time and how is time and sometimes time is just an abstract um, idea that is floating sometimes it's actually tangible so um, one has to stay tuned to see what, yes. what uh, will follow well definitely have to have to watch out for what's next um, we've got some great comments in the chat um, Heather commented how beautiful that the arms from your other creations are, are coming together at the end of in the Damba dance, which is on in our exhibition here at the Frist. Um, she says, what an amazing culmination of the stories you tell. Oh, thank you for that. Let's see, here's a question. Is identity a core component of your work? And do you feel that Sophie evolves or solves the issue of identity? Um, solving, geez, solving is just, whoa, it's like finishing, it's like, what? No, solving is just, it's, it's, it's large, it's larger than the world. Um, it's an attempt. Um, um, I'll say yes in, 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 in identity that um, I'm looking at um, my blackness, what makes me um, a black woman that I am, what has influenced me. Um, um, and, and also my geography, um, and also um, and all these other institutions that um, have made us into the society that we are. Um, and of course, that also influence um, the person that I am. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. Yes, definitely. Um, is your work currently on display anywhere else at the moment? Heather asks. Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. There's always something happening. Uh, not not at the moment. Only at, in, in, um, in, 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 at the Frist Museum. Well, we are thrilled to have it here in Nashville. Um, and some some of the beautiful works that you spoke about today are on view, and we're appreciative of you taking us through your artistic journey. Um, let's see here. 
what do you think about the ages of your of your viewers? Um, do you think that young children? Can um, can, can look, yeah, I think anyone, anyone. My work is not explicit. Uh, my work just speaks about, um, um, it speaks about how, how it's like being human. And I think if we expose these ideas um, to kids, um, they'll grow with the idea of, 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 you know, they'll be influenced in some way. Because, uh, um, because yes, I'm looking at. I, yes, I'm a, I'm a visual artist, but I'm actually drawing from from history. So, chances are they'll learn something about um, about their history. So, it's not limit, limited at all. Anyone who's interested can actually look at the work. Let's see here. One more here. Was there any inspiration for you to take Sophie outside? The image I think that we have in our exhibition where Sophie is, looks like she's standing by a bus stop, but there's also the chandelier. Oh, maybe outside the one, maybe that was the one where it was actually photographed in nature. In nature, oh, oh yes, yes. Um, actually, that's the first work um, or figure that was, that is, hmm. No, I've done other, other um, um, what do you call them? In, installations outside um, um, uh, using bronze, um, steel and et cetera. Um, but I guess it depends on the, on the concept that I have. With that work, work, it made sense that it was outside and um, it was exhibited at Vanus um, in, Vanus? in Sweden. Um, and um, and it's a sculpture park, so I wanted to make work that is suitable for the for the for, for the elements. Is that a permanent installation or t just temporary? Um, it was temporary. It was um, I think it was about five months long. Yeah, and it also came back to South Africa. We also have a a sculpture park. Um, um, it, it, it's called Nairos. So the work was also exhibit, exhibited there for a few months. We'll do one more. Um, Sarah also asked if you have a favorite work or which work speaks to you the most. I think the work that is my favorite will be the first work that I've ever done. Um, and it's, I don't know if I can go back to it. Uh, let's see. This one right here. Um, it's the, actually the first performance that I did and um, all the other works um, are kind of attempting to be this work. Um, so I will say that um, as soon as I make the work that is actually absolute, I'll stop making art. Um, right now I'm attempting to make this amazing work and I feel like I'm still not reaching that absolute, you know, like that top of a mountain where you're like, this is it. I still, still haven't reached that part yet. So I think this work is kind of kind of getting closer to the, to the tip of a mountain. Um, and the other works are kind of supporting. Yeah. Well, it's Absolutely a beautiful exhibition. Thank you again for sharing your work with Nashville and for sharing um, more about your practice with us this afternoon. Um, and thank you all for joining us. We would love for you to come see Mary Sabande Blue Purple Red at the Frist Art Museum. Um, we hope to see you in person soon or virtually at our next program online. You can find out more about our upcoming programs, both in person and virtual by visiting our website, by following us on social media at Frist Art Museum, or by signing up for our weekly email newsletter. And we are grateful for your support of the Frist Art Museum. Financial gifts during this time allow us to bring you great programming like today's lecture. Support of any amount is greatly appreciated and we hope you'll consider making a donation at fristartmuseum.org. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much again, Mary. And we're so appreciative. Um, thank you, Mark.
for thank you so much. Thank you to, uh, yeah, thank you to Chris Atkins and thank you for having me. And yeah, it's been a great honor. Thank you, Mary. This was wonderful. I learned so much. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Bye. Great. Okay, bye. Good night. Bye.